At Still Motion, we believe that story is made of four pillars, or P's as we like to call them, people, places, plot, and purpose. People, characters that make up our films. Places, the big pictures as well as the details we live in. Plot, the overall arc and structure of a story. And purpose, our intention in making a film. The P that you put first will determine the type of story you tell. If you put plot first, you have an action movie. If you put places first, you have a travel video. If you put purpose first, then you have a commercial. But when you put people first, you have a character-driven narrative. So what does that mean? Ultimately, if you give your viewer one character to root for, someone they can get invested in, you will have greater ability to form a powerful connection with the viewer. Let's think about it for a second. Imagine that it's late at night and you're watching TV. A commercial for a local animal rescue comes on. It tells us about the plight of all kinds of cats and dogs that need your help. You are shown pictures of cuddly kittens and sad puppies that are in need of just a few dollars a day or a foster home. The makers of this commercial have put purpose first, and though we may spend a few minutes considering opening up our wallets, as soon as the ad is over, we are relieved. Not because we aren't compassionate, but because we're uncomfortable. Now imagine you're watching a wedding video. It opens up with shot after shot of an empty ceremony site and the shoes and the rings and the dress. If it's not your wedding, it doesn't take long before the details are irrelevant and you're bored. It's the cliche of somebody else's vacation slideshow. It's okay for about a minute and a half, and then you're suddenly looking for the nearest exit. That's putting places first. A lot of beautiful objects, environments, and scenery to look at, but nothing to feel strongly about. Now let's say you head off to the theater to see the latest blockbuster action movie, and it's full of car chases and explosions and dynamic fighting scenes, each one more elaborate than the last. But for this particular film, as you hit the 60 minute mark, you find that you're getting restless. You're ready for it to be over. In this example, plot was put first, and you, as the viewer, had no emotional connection to the hero. You didn't care if they emerged victorious, if they reached their goal, because you didn't really know them. Despite the elaborate explosions, a few hours after the film is over, it's gone from your mind. It didn't change the way you thought or felt about anything, and thus, it was a bit forgettable. Lastly, let's imagine that you're cruising the internet and you come across a thumbnail of a woman sitting under an elephant on Vimeo. You click on it because you need to know what that could be about. You meet Lek, a woman who spends her life rescuing abused elephants on an elephant sanctuary that she founded just north of Chiang Mai, Thailand. Now when Lek was a child, her grandfather taught her to respect all living beings. He had been the medicine man for the hill villages around their home. One day, he was given an elephant as a gift for healing a village elder. She refers to the elephant she grew up with as her sister and talks about how her sister taught her to be gentle and compassionate. She talks about the unconditional love she has learned from the elephants she works with now. You can see the gentle touch that okay. exists between them. Heavy rain, no and because of all of that, chances are that you're going to stay to watch this story just a little bit longer than that other animal rescue spot, the shallow action movie, or the wedding video that's filled to the brim with detail shots. Putting people first in our storytelling gives us the ability to engage with someone else, to dig below the surface at the heart. We can identify with them. We can feel for them. People can help us make sense of our experience, of things we have gone through, or things we imagine might come to pass. Because people are the strongest way to connect with the viewer of our story, we want to encourage you to lead with people. This is why we're asking you to focus on one main character. After all, it's easier to connect with one person than it is a group. We call this person the heart of your story because they are the reason why the viewer will care about the story that you're telling. Now that doesn't mean that there's only one person in your film. We absolutely encourage you to include other characters if they fit your story. When working with nonprofits, charities, and Good Samaritans, you'll often find that there are many people involved in making change for the better possible. And don't worry, in our next tutorial, we'll talk about finding the heart of your story and the qualities that will make them a strong lead. In choosing a story to tell, you don't want to ignore purpose. To find your purpose in telling a story for storytelling parade, we're gonna recommend that you develop keywords. 
We start by listing as many possible single words that are relevant to finding the story that you want to tell. We ask that you narrow your list of 20 to 30 single words to just five. You will begin to notice synonyms and clusters of words that are trying to express the same sentiments. You might also find that there are holes, things that should be expressed but haven't been. These keywords will represent the stories that you love to tell, why you love filmmaking, and the people that you really enjoy working with. As you complete the exercise, you'll come away with five keywords that represent your why. Those keywords are a huge help in finding the charity that fits you, a story that you will love telling. It's important that you develop your keywords before you start looking for a story. It's hard to make sure that you end up with a story that you're really connected to if you haven't taken the time to define the type of story that you want to tell. As a help, we've provided a keywords worksheet on the Storytelling Parade website. Download it and try the exercise. Then do some research into local charities, nonprofits, or people who might fit the five words you've come up with for yourself. Thanks for joining us, gang. We can't wait to share what we have in store for your story next.